Good afternoon, and welcome to Couchbase's fourth quarter 2024 earnings call. We will be discussing the results announced in our press release issued after the market closed today. With me are Couchbase's chair, president, and CEO, Matt Kane, and CFO, Greg Henry. Today's call will contain forward-looking statements, which include statements concerning financial and business trends and strategies, market size, product capabilities, our expected future business and financial performance and financial condition, and our guidance for future periods. These statements reflect our views as of today only and should not be relied upon as representing our views at any subsequent date, and we do not undertake any duty to update these statements. Forward-looking statements by their, na- their nature address matters that are subject to risks and uncertainties that could cause actual results to differ materially from expectations. For a discussion of the material risks and other important factors that could affect their actual results, please refer to the risks discussed in today's press release and our most recent annual report on Form 10-K or quarterly report on Form 10-Q filed with the SEC. During the call, we will also discuss certain non-GAAP financial measures which are not prepared in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. A reconciliation of these non-GAAP financial measures to the most directly comparable GAAP financial measures, as well as how we define these metrics and other metrics is included in our earnings press releases, which are available on our Investor Relations website. With that, let me turn the call over to Matt. Good afternoon, and welcome to Couchbase's fourth quarter 2024 earnings call. We will be discussing the results announced in our press release issued after the market closed today. With me are Couchbase's chair, president, and CEO, Matt Kane, and CFO, Greg Henry. Today's call will contain forward-looking statements, which include statements concerning financial and business trends and strategies, market size, product capabilities, our expected future business and financial performance and financial condition, and our guidance for future periods. These statements reflect our views as of today only and should not be relied upon as representing our views at any subsequent date. We do not undertake any duty to update these statements. Forward-looking statements by their nature address matters that are subject to risks and uncertainties that could cause actual results to differ materially from expectations. For discussion of the material risks and other important factors that could affect our actual results, please refer to the risks discussed in today's press release and our most recent annual report on Form 10-K or quarterly report on Form 10-Q filed with the SEC. During the call, we will also discuss certain non-GAAP financial measures which are not prepared in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. A reconciliation of these non-GAAP financial measures to the most directly comparable GAAP financial measures, as well as how we define these metrics and other metrics, is included in our earnings press releases, which are available on our investor relations website. With that, let me turn the call over to Matt. Thank you, Edward, and thank you all for joining us on the call today. I'm delighted to report that we have delivered a strong Q4 with all our key financial metrics exceeding our outlook. Highlights include growing Capella mix, continued big deal activity, including a particularly robust quarter for renewals and expansions, strong new customer logos, and overall excellent operational performance from all teams across the company. Total annual recurring revenue, or ARR, was 204.2 million, up 25% year over year. Revenue in Q4 was 50.1 million, up 20% year over year. Non-GAAP operating loss in Q4 was 4.1 million, representing a negative operating margin of 8.2%, 8.6 percentage points above the midpoint of our implied operating margin guidance range. We finished fiscal 2024 with strong momentum, capping off a historic year for Couchbase. We drove strong top-line growth in a challenging macroeconomic environment, including accelerating our net new ARR growth. We achieved important milestones with Capella, which now represents 11% of our ARR and over 25% of our customer base. We worked tirelessly to improve our operational rigor and improve our efficiency across the entire company, which resulted in meaningful operating profit outperformance in substantial operating and free cash flow margin expansion. We enhanced and refined our go-to-market motion across marketing, sales, and our partner ecosystems. 
Our product and engineering teams delivered multiple important enhancements and capabilities across our platform and did so at an accelerated pace. And we welcome many of you to our first analyst day as a public company just this last December in New York. I couldn't be more proud of the progress we made across all of our key strategic initiatives. Deliver top line growth, increase the mix of Capella, drive sales and marketing efficiency, and accelerate the pace of leverage in our model. Now, let me discuss some highlights of the quarter and the year. I'll start by reviewing the many innovations we have announced over the past few months. These have contributed to the inflection point we are seeing with Capella and will be instrumental in unlocking future growth and leverage opportunities. From day one, we've architected our platform to enable demanding applications to not only deliver premium performance, but also provide rich, hyper-personalized, differentiated experiences for end users. Because of our differentiated architecture, our multi-purpose platform converges operational and analytical capabilities and seamlessly integrates advanced services like indexing, eventing, full text search, and more in a single solution. This approach is why Couchbase can uniquely power adaptive applications for customers. We've built a strong foundation with differentiation we can sustain. And now we've taken that foundation and have layered on new features and capabilities that we have recently announced that position us well for how adaptive applications are evolving with AI. First, we increase developer productivity by introducing the Capella IQ Copilot into our database as a service. IQ allows developers to interact with Capella using natural language conversation, making database interactions more intuitive, efficient, and accessible for developers. They can go from an idea to code in just a few clicks. Next, we further extended our platform capabilities by announcing a columnar service for Capella, which converges operational and real-time analytic workloads into a single platform. Customers can ingest data from anywhere into Capella in real time, reducing complexity and costs while increasing developer productivity. Initial feedback from the private preview has been exceptional, and we are excited about what this key new service will unlock. Finally, as you may have seen last week, we announced Vector Search as a new feature in our platform, optimized for running on-site, across clouds, and devices at the edge, including mobile and IoT. While Vector Database Point Solutions aim to solve the challenges of processing and storing data for LLMs, having multiple standalone solutions adds complexity to the enterprise IT stack and slows application performance. Our multi-purpose capabilities eliminate that friction and deliver a simplified and unified architecture to improve the accuracy of LLM results. We also make it easier and faster for developers to build applications by using a single SQL++ query, which incorporates the vector index, removing the need to use multiple indexes or products. And we're the first vendor to announce vector search at the edge, enabling organizations to run AI applications anywhere in connected or disconnected modes. I'm also pleased to announce that we are extending our AI partner ecosystem with LangChang and Llama Index integrations, enabling a common API interface to converse with a broad library of LLMs while providing developers with choices for LLMs. Taken together, we're embracing the opportunity to enable hyper-personalized, high-performing, and adaptive applications powered by AI that deliver exceptional experiences to their end users. Customers are responding very positively to how our approach is aligned to their AI-powered adaptive application journey. As you can see, we've achieved a lot in a short amount of time on both product innovation and customer uptake, and it's gratifying to see our efforts bearing fruit. As our Capella base continues to grow, we're seeing favorable consumption dynamics emerge as both existing and new customers realize our platform's unique performance and scale. We're seeing increased consumption across our customer base, 
which is indicative not only of the value we bring, but also gives us confidence in our ability to deliver sustainable growth. As such, we are committed to taking advantage of this recent inflection we've seen. We fully expect Capella to become an increasingly meaningful driver behind ARR and net retention, as well as an important engine for new logo acquisition. And it will contribute to leverage across our entire business. Now I'd like to turn to customer wins. In Q4, we saw new Capella wins across many industries, including manufacturing, media, fintech, technology, retail, and telco. Array is a financial innovation platform that helps digital brands, financial institutions, and fintechs get compelling consumer products to market faster. Array's offerings helps its partners drive revenue, increase engagement, and empower millions of consumers to achieve their financial goals. This quarter, Array selected Capella to support profile management for its privacy application because of the compelling value and impressive database performance. In Q4, a leading cloud communications provider expanded its investment in Capella to continue supporting its real-time communications platform. This platform connects widely used applications to carriers worldwide, with all conversations being managed and recorded with our cloud database platform. This customer initially began migrating to Capella because of the scalability and benefits that a fully managed service provided to its developer team. They gained the ability to step away from database management and focus on developing core business applications. Another Capella expansion from the quarter came from a premier provider of life insurance in the Asia Pacific region. Couchbase powers customer 360 data for this provider's many millions of customers. The customer decided to expand its investment in Capella on Google Cloud for cost optimization and to continue modernizing their architecture and database management in the cloud. Of note, this was our first multi-million dollar Capella migration. We also continue to see robust large deal activity with the strong foundation of our enterprise server. A new enterprise logo for us this quarter came from a multinational financial services company and one of Europe's leading banks, BBVA. They selected Couchbase to replace another NoSQL database at a worldwide level because of the price performance our platform offered, and they will be using Couchbase to power profile management for its entire customer base. Finally, as I previously mentioned, we saw robust renewal and expansion activity in the quarter with some of our largest customers. This includes a Fortune 500 shipping and logistics company, which saw the largest expansion in our history, and a major multinational technology company that provides software solutions for the global travel and tourism industry. Both customers rely on Couchbase for multiple applications and deployment modalities, and we're honored to continue their journey with them. As we look ahead towards fiscal 2025, we have a massive opportunity in front of us. Our foundation rests upon a carefully architected platform, purpose-built to enable mission-critical, adaptive applications that are often being deployed at the edge in an increasingly AI-powered world. I strongly believe that our foundational tenets of scale, performance, and flexibility have never been more relevant as we continue to leverage our core innovations while adding new ones. These include our new real-time analytic and vector search capabilities, both of which together have the potential to make a meaningful impact to our business. Our priorities going forward are to continue to drive sustained growth, capitalize on the inflection we're seeing across the business, and accelerate the pace of leverage in our model. If I were to emphasize one of these priorities, it's the forthcoming leverage that I see building across all aspects of our business. This spans from how we innovate and deliver new capabilities and services to how we go to market, growing our outstanding customers while also acquiring new ones, to driving more efficiency in our P&L and model. 
Having held our annual kickoff last month, I can say confidently that we have a strong, motivated, and highly aligned team in place to achieve our ambitions in fiscal 2025. At Couchbase, we're inspired by the generational opportunity that is in front of us and in being a trusted advisor for our customers, partners, and the broader industry. It's an honor to be a strategic technology provider to so many organizations that are changing the way we interact through their modern applications. We have work to do, and it won't be easy, but at Couchbase, we pride ourselves on attacking hard problems driven by customer outcomes. With that, I'll hand the call over to Greg to walk you through our results in more detail. Greg? Thanks, Matt, and thanks everyone for joining us. We finished fiscal 2024 with another strong quarter as we beat guidance across all key metrics. We are pleased with our execution, our dedication to delivering value to our customers, and our ability to navigate the environment while driving very strong outperformance in our operating loss guidance. I'll now walk you through our fourth quarter and full year fiscal 2024 financial results in more detail. Total annual recurring revenue, or ARR, was $204.2 million at the end of the fourth quarter, representing 25% growth year over year and 8% sequentially, driven by strong growth in Capella contribution as well as our core enterprise business. At the end of the quarter, Capella ARR was $21.8 million, representing 11% of our total ARR. Revenue for the fourth quarter was $50.1 million, an increase of 20% year-over-year and 9% sequentially, and $180 million for the full year, an increase of 16% year-over-year. Revenue growth benefited from growing consumption of Capella and strength in our enterprise business, partially offset by declines in professional services. Subscription revenue for the fourth quarter was $48.1 million, an increase of 26% year-over-year and 9% sequentially, and $171.6 million for the full year, an increase of 20% year-over-year. Professional services revenue for the fourth quarter was $2 million, a decline of 42% year-over-year, and an increase of 12% sequentially, and $8.5 million for the full year, a decline of 29% year-over-year. As a reminder, this was consistent with our expectations following outsized strength in professional services in fiscal 2023. We expect professional services to normalize at current levels in fiscal 2025. Our ARR per customer performance in the fourth quarter was $273,000, up from $264,000 in the third quarter, up 12% year over year, and indicative of the growing wallet share we have with large customers. As a reminder, as our Capella mix continues to grow in contribution, we expect ARR per customer growth could moderate or decline in future quarters. Our dollar-based net retention rate, or NRR, continues to exceed 115%, driven by strong renewal and upsell activity across our base of larger enterprise customers. Our NRR has been steadily improving thanks to Capella. We exited the year with 749 customers, an increase of 34 net new customers from the third quarter. Capella once again represented the majority of new logos in the quarter, and we grew our Capella customer logo count by 41, over 25% from the third quarter. We continue to be encouraged by the strength of our new logo pipeline and remain confident in our ability to reliably expand logos as evidenced by our consistent ARR growth and our strong retention metrics. In discussing the remainder of the income statement, please note that unless otherwise stated, all references to our expenses, results of operations, and share count are on a non-GAAP basis. In Q4, our gross margin was 90.4%, benefiting from sustained enterprise gross profit margin strength lower services revenue mix, the completion of the amortization from some of our initial Capella investments, and leverage as a result of our expanding Capella revenue base, offset by growing Capella mix, which carries lower gross margins. This compares to a gross margin of 86.3% a year ago and 89.5% last quarter. For the full fiscal year, our gross margin was 88.5% compared to 87.6% in fiscal 2023. As a reminder, as Capella mix increases, we expect gross margin will decline in fiscal 2025. Turning to expenses, we continue to invest to capture the generational opportunity we see in front of us, but are focused on driving leverage across our business. We are pleased with our execution on this front as our expense discipline and benefits from our cost savings initiatives resulted in us again outperforming our operating loss outlook. 
Our sales and marketing expenses for Q4 were $29.4 million, or 59% of revenue, compared to $26.7 million, or 64% of revenue a year ago. For the full fiscal year, our sales and marketing expenses were $113.6 million, or 63% of revenue, compared to $101.3 million, or 65% of revenue in the prior fiscal year. Research and development expenses for Q4 were $12.9 million, or 26% of revenue, compared to $12.9 million, or 31% of revenue a year ago. For the full fiscal year, our research and development expenses were $50.5 million, or 28% of revenue, compared to $49.7 million, or 32% of revenue in the prior fiscal year. General and administrative expenses for Q4 were $7.1 million, or 14% of total revenue, compared to $6.3 million, or 15% of revenue a year ago. For the full fiscal year, our general administrative expenses were $26.5 million, or 15% of revenue, compared to $25.9 million, or 17% of revenue in the prior fiscal year. Operating loss for Q4 was $4.1 million, or a negative 8% operating margin, compared to an operating loss of $9.9 million, or a negative 24% operating margin a year ago. Operating loss for the full fiscal year was $31.3 million, or negative 17% operating margin, compared to an operating loss of $41.3 million, or negative 27% operating margin in the prior fiscal year. Net loss attributable to common stockholders for Q4 was $2.9 million, or negative six cents per share. For the full fiscal year, net loss was $27 million, or negative 57 cents per share. Before I turn to the balance sheet and cash flow statement, I want to mention an impairment charge of $5.2 million that we recognize in Q4. This impairment charge relates to a reprioritization of some R&D resources as we have focused our efforts on Capella, AI capabilities, services, and related developments. This has been excluded from but does not affect our non-GAAP results for the quarter. Turning to the balance sheet and cash flow statement, we ended Q4 with $153.6 million in cash, cash equivalents, and short-term investments. We remain well capitalized to execute against our long-term growth strategy. Our remaining performance obligations, or RPO, totaled $241.8 million at the end of Q4, an increase of 46% year-over-year, driven in part by the timing of robust renewal activity with some of our larger customers, several of which are on multi-year contracts, driving higher average duration than we have seen in recent quarters. We expect to recognize approximately 61%, or $147.6 million of total RPO as revenue over the fiscal year 2025, which represents 26% year-over-year growth. As a reminder, we experienced fluctuations in our RPO balances due to a host of factors, including renewal time as well as changes in contract duration. Operating cash flow for Q4 was negative $6.5 million, and for the full year was negative $26.9 million. Free cash flow for Q4 was negative $7.7 million, or negative 15.4% free cash flow margin. Free cash flow for the full year was negative $31.6 million, or negative 17.6% free cash flow margin. Now, I will provide guidance for Q1 and the full year fiscal 2025. As Matt discussed, we enter fiscal 2025 with very strong momentum across our businesses, and our pipeline remains strong. We achieved a critical milestone with Capella and expect it will continue to be an important driver behind all aspects of our business in fiscal 2025. Furthermore, we anticipate that our investment in our product capabilities, partner ecosystem, and go-to-market motion will continue to complement our ARR momentum. While we continue to scrutinize our expenses as we remain dedicated to increasing our efficiency, growing our free cash flow and operating margins, and driving leverage across the business with continued focus on increasing our Rule of 40 metric. We will continue to invest in our strategic priorities. As such, we expect to grow OPEX slightly faster in fiscal 2025 than in fiscal 2024. We remain committed to achieving positive free cash flow by fiscal 2026 and positive operating income by fiscal 2027, underpinned by 20% plus compound annual ARR growth as I discussed last December at Analyst Day. Finally, we remain mindful of the macro headwinds and continue to carefully monitor their impact on our business. As such, our outlook maintains a consistent degree of conservatism to account for the uncertainty as well as lack of visibility 
into how the macro may impact consumption trends for our emerging as a service offering. With these factors in mind, for the first quarter of fiscal 2025, we expect total revenue in the range of $48.1 million to $48.9 million, or year-over-year growth of 18% at the midpoint. We anticipate ARR in the range of $206.5 million to $209.5 million, which represents 21% growth year-over-year at the midpoint. We expect a non-GAAP operating loss in the range of negative $8.5 million to negative $7.5 million. For the full year of fiscal 2025, we expect total revenue in the range of $203 million to $207 million, or year-over-year growth of 14% at the midpoint. As a reminder, we've historically seen variability with respect to the implementation timing of certain enterprise deals and new or migrated Capella customers, which impacts our revenue visibility. We expect this timing dynamic to influence the pace of revenue growth in fiscal 2025, with aforementioned large customer renewals continuing into the first half of fiscal 2025 and causing our revenue seasonality to be slightly more weighted in the first half of the year relative to what we saw in fiscal 2024. As such, we'd expect fiscal Q3 revenue could be flattish from Q2. We therefore continue to view ARR as a better indicator than revenue of the strength of our business. We expect full-year fiscal 2025 ARR in the range of $235.5 million to $240.5 million, or 17% growth at the midpoint. And finally, we expect a non-GAAP operating loss in the range of negative $27.5 million to negative $22.5 million. With that, Matt and I are happy to take your questions. Operator? Thank you. We will now conduct our question and answer session. If you would like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. A confirmation tone will indicate that your line is in the question queue. You may press star 2 if you would like to remove your question from the queue. For participants using speaker equipment, it may be necessary to pick up your handset before pressing the star keys. And once again, to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Our first question comes from Matt Hedberg with RBC Capital Markets. Please state your question. Great, guys. Thanks for taking my questions. Congrats on a really strong year. And it's really, really good to see the uh, success with Capella and just, just general buying behavior improvement. Um, I, I think it, it, it feels like it's a lot of hard work that's gone into that. So so well done, guys. Um, you know, on, on the strong customer ads this quarter, and I guess most specifically uh, Capella wins, can you talk about sort of both that, that, that partner motion as well as sort of the direct effort there? Because I know it's been a lot of work, not only on the product side, but on the go-to-market side. Maybe you know, where are you seeing some of the most uh, success on, on some of the go-to-market um, initiatives? Hey, Matt, how are you? Good, good, to, good to speak. Um, certainly appreciate the acknowledgement on the hard work. We, we do look at it as a historic year for the company. Um, look, we've been talking all year on uh, – the expectation that Capella is really going to help us on new logo acquisition. Um, we saw great geographic balance uh, in the quarter, um, you know, continue looking after new logos as well as migrations. But you're right to call out, you know, the partner contribution. Um, we've been really focused for some time now on driving robust relationships at a global and local level with the likes of AWS and the other cloud providers. Um, I'd, I'd say that was a highlight in the quarter. Um, but it wasn't only AWS. You know, we called out uh, the largest Capella migration we've ever seen with, with GCP. Um, so I think when, when you mentioned that this is a result of a lot of hard work, I'd say there's a lot of diversification to, uh, to the outcome. And, um, you know, we, we, we had high expectations and, and continue to do so on, on a lot of fronts with uh, Capella in general and, you know, the, the success with the partnerships. Really, really good to hear that. that that's it's, it's great. Um, and then maybe just as a follow up, um, you know, you mentioned in your prepared remarks, you talked about vector search. Can you talk about you know what you expect to see some customer use cases for that, and and maybe how you think that might impact um, you know monetization or, or growth rates from a customer perspective? Yeah, look, we're really excited uh, to be on you know the forefront of what we think is maybe the largest market transition the world's seen, and certainly the greatest catalyst to application innovation that we've seen for some time. Um, you can appreciate that due to the nature of our sophisticated platform, uh, we're fortunate to engage in a lot of future discussions with, with customers, and it's coming across a wide ver variety of, of verticals. 
A um, couple examples that I would point to that I like a lot, you know, recently we were talking to an e-commerce provider and, you know, they're envisioning, well, how do I change the customer experience, you know, at the edge? Um, an example could be, hey, I want a new pair of shoes that matches the outfit that I'm wearing that's the color of the car parked outside, um, available within, you know, 15 miles with, with inventory in store today. Um, that would be really hard to do without the addition of AI and combining that with platform capabilities that allow not just vector search, but understanding text and range-based search and geospatial technology. And the fact that we've taken the comprehensive platform approach to, um, you know, Capella and, and Enterprise um, allows us to support those types of applications. Now, a lot of people, Matt, are excited about the upside of AI and those hyper-personalized adaptive applications that are going to be increasingly common in our life. But there's also, you know, the downside that enterprises are worried about. Another customer that we're actively talking about is in the logistics space. Um, and they're, they're looking about, you know, in, integrating chatbot technology to drive efficiency throughout their organization. Um, and while we're working with them, they have a peer in, in an industry where the chatbot went wrong. Um, started making disparaging remarks about the company, you know, negatively interfacing with customers. Um, and so what that points to is the downside of ensuring that enterprise information is protected um, and that, you know, you avoid, you know, the, the downside of, of AI getting angry. Um, and so we're engaged in POCs to prove that um, we can minimize the downside with, you know, with our use of data and integrating multiple data sources, but also provide the upside of, of those unique experiences. So hopefully that gives you a sense of, you know, the types of engagements that we're um, having with our customers and, and really taking pride of being a future strategic platform that they can bet on for, uh, you know, the necessity of multiple use cases that we bring together. Thanks a lot, Matt. Well done. Thank you. And our next question comes from Jason Ader with William Blair. Please state your question. Yeah, thank you. Good afternoon, guys. Uh, just wanted to try to square the guidance a bit with all the positive commentary and in particular the 25% um, you know, ARR growth that you just reported for the quarter and for the year. Um, it basically looks like based on the Q1 guidance, there'd need to be uh, you know, some deceleration as the year progressed in ARR growth. And just given all the good things that you have on the, in the going on in the business, I'm just trying to reconcile that. And, um, you know, maybe there's something more specific going on. Maybe you had some, you know, large renewals or early renewals in uh, FY24 that won't recur in FY25. Can you just help us uh, kind of square the guidance with all the positive commentary? Yeah, hey, Jason, it's Greg. Uh, good to hear from you. Uh, thanks for the question. Look, we're obviously very happy with how we performed in fiscal 24 with ARR performance accelerating again yet another year, and we remain committed to being to growing our top line 20-plus uh, percent. Obviously, you know, we're early days uh, into fiscal 25. We feel very good about how we've guided, and as we've always stated, we're working to, at a minimum, meet it, if not beat it. And I think we've have a, uh, established a good track record of that now. And so we just got to go out there, as Matt said, and it's going to be a lot of hard work, but, you know, we, we know what's in front of us and we feel good about it. And like I said, we're, we're still committed to over this, uh, you know, medium term period that we laid out over the investor day, be a 20 plus percent grower. And that's what we've been working for for the last month and we'll continue to do for the rest of the year. Gotcha. So it's just, we're, we're, we're just going to be conservative on the year, given all of the macro uncertainty. I think we're going to continue to maintain the same level of conservatism that we had last year and, and um, with, with some of the macro. And again, as Capella continues to ramp over time. But again, we feel like we're in a, in a good position and um, coming off a good year. And um, we'll go work at it for the next 11 months to deliver, you know, at least what we've guided to, if not better. Gotcha. And then one quick follow-up for you, um, Greg, on the gross margin. Can you give us a sense of where gross margin, um, where the gross margin outlook will be for FY25 and beyond? I know you have Capella. That's a lower gross margin 
offering. So uh, can you just help us uh, with the models there? Yeah, it'll it'll um, it'll certainly um, continue to it'll tick down from where it is now. It'll probably tick down uh, quarter on quarter as we go throughout the year as Capella becomes more and more uh, meaningful to the business. So um, that's how I would uh, think about modeling that as you go through um, fiscal 25. Gotcha. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Jason. Our next question comes from Rob Oliver with Baird. Please state your question. Great. Good evening. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Greg. Um, two questions for me. The first is on ARR. I know you guys have said that ARR could moderate as you ramp Capella, but you know, you're know you continuing to see really nice growth up 12% year over year. Um, and I know from the analyst day and from some of our conversations, it does seem like some of the Capella transitions are actually producing uh, larger ARR numbers. So we'd just be curious to know what sort of color you can provide and what you're seeing in that uplift uh, on ARR as you move your customers to Capella. And then I had a quick follow-up. Yeah. Hey, Rob. Um, great to hear from you. Yeah, look, we, we still feel great. I mean, uh, we, we laid out, obviously, at the Investor Day how Capella was performing. We gave you the you know, that for last Q3, the in-quarter net retention rate was 167%. Um, so when we bring those customers on, we continue to grow them very nicely. And um, we think we can maintain doing that. We talked about, um, you know, that we have uh, continued progress in terms of Capella penetration of our AR balance. We will continue to see that throughout the year. And um, we feel, again, very good about uh, how Capella is performing both migrations and, as Matt talked about, the new logo piece of things. So, um, I, I don't think we're going to see um, moderation from Capello. I think it's going to continue to be the tailwind, and um, and that's why we felt confident at the investor today to talk about having this medium-term growth rate of 20 plus percent for uh, for the top line. Rob, let me let me tell you an exciting story from the year. Recently, speaking with a customer, they they started off. They were a very small couch-based customer. And this is a company that, that you would know, big scale, big technology focus. Uh, at the beginning of this fiscal year, the, the one that we just finished, they were less than 20K. Over the course of the year, we proved our value proposition to them with Capella. They had multiple uh, applications that they migrated into Couchbase Capella, and we ex exited the year with them running north of 800K ARR. Now, they would have said out of the gate, hey, we're interested in this, and we hear what you're saying on the value proposition, but what the customer explicitly said that was running this is, I need to prove this out to me and my teams. These are mission-critical applications that the company is running on, and we need to be very diligent with how we prove this out, how we plan our workflows, how we plan our you know, upgrade project. And, and that's indicative of conversations that we're having with a lot of customers on, on migrations. And as we've said before, we don't want to push customers before they're ready. Um, we don't think that's smart. Um, reality is there's only so much that we would be successful with that. We want to be a, a trusted partner. So we think there's a lot, many, many, many more of those to come. We can't predict, you know, when we're going to get those, those growth rates, just like we wouldn't have predicted the scale of that one over the course of the year. Um, so I think, you know, we're just, we got to balance um, what we can control and what we can't. And I think you, um, you hear us talking about the potential because that's real. Um, and customers are telling us how valuable it is once they get in there. But, but there's some work to do based on the, you know, mission critical nature of a lot of these applications. That's super exciting. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Greg. And then my quick follow-up is just Greg for you um, on Capella IQ and some of the costs associated with that. Um, yeah, I appreciated, you know, earlier my previous question, Jason was pushing you guys on potential conservatism on, on the top line and on ARR. And I guess, you know, how, how firm a handle do you guys have on the costs associated with um, Capella IQ? And just wanted to get a sense for how you sort of factored that into the cost outlook for the year. Thanks again, guys. Yeah, thanks, Rob. Yeah, look, we we have a I think we have a very good handle on the cost profile of Capella and can um, e easily model that out. I think the the more challenging piece, what Matt said, is just the pace of adoption and my, particularly the migrations that are going to drive you know the growth of Capella as we as we go here. So 
I, I feel very comfortable about how we are on on managing the cost and um, understanding how that's going to play out over the you know the course of the next year or even several years. It's really about the top line um, growth that's associated with it. So we feel we feel very good about where the uh, that business is going and where we'll eventually get from a Capella margin perspective. Awesome, appreciate it. Thanks again, guys. Thanks, Rob. Our next question comes from Raimo Lenshaw with Barclays. Please state your question. Hey, thank you, and congrats for me as well. Um, uh, Matt, one for you. Like, as Capella becomes like a bigger part of the overall mix, and obviously the momentum is clearly there for you, how do you think about your sales approach uh, and, and how you sell, how you incentivize the sales force? Uh, I'm asking because a lot of your peers that have gone through the same transition uh, at some point discover it like you know you probably need to kind of think about different ways so think more about consumption uh, rather than uh, just kind of uh, putting like a proper project in place like uh, is there anything in on the horizon for you guys as we think about this year or next year thank you Rhino, great question um, we we had our sales kickoff week one of this fiscal year and I was particularly excited about it and people were asking me, you know, why the excitement and obviously we wanted to share the good news on the fiscal year and celebrate a lot of great work by many people. Um, what I was more excited about is the work that we've done to get in front of this year um, and despite the fact that we delivered results that we were proud of knowing that we, we can do more. And a lot of it is understanding underlying dynamics of Capella and consumption at a much higher level than we did a year ago because we have, you know, a lot of data that, that we can chew on. Um, we're now able to look at, at our pipeline in, in an even more sophisticated way to understand, look, is this a customer that's building a net new application that needs to understand the capabilities and how to integrate, you know, SQL with natural language for developers? Or is this a use case where somebody's replatforming an application off a competitive solution and displacing an existing database where something like TCO and application rewrite is, is so much more important? As we peel those layers, we can be much more um, fine-tuned with our go-to-market approach and aligned to what prospects and customers are, are looking for. Um, and so we've layered this approach in um, to everything we're doing on, on the go-to-market, and, and that just goes above and beyond what we what we already had in place. Then we can follow up with specific enablement to our teams to say, hey, if you're getting these types of questions, this is part of the value proposition that you need to point to, or you know, here's how to leverage a trial or professional services. Um, all of that is with a lens of Capella and, and consumption. And then over the course of the year, as we've executed on this inflection, really building the instrumentation that we need to um, understand every aspect of, of how customers are consuming. Maybe they're tracking below what we might have thought. Maybe they're running, you know, hot. Being able to, um, you know, speak to them on a proactive basis to make sure that, you know, that's headed in the direction that we want it to be and, and we want them to be. So I'd say those are all different dynamics that, um, you know, the team is really leading into, um, and, and we're excited to, uh, to keep pushing forward. Yeah, and Rymo, I just add one thing is even last year, and it will continue this year, we have an element of consumption as part of the sales compensation plan. So it's not just about selling the project, but also, you know, getting consumption going as well. Yeah, okay, perfect. That makes sense. And then, Greg, one for you, and it's more, not not so much for this year, but more conceptually. Uh, if you think about professional services, um, do you do you, how do you kind of plan with the, that as a percent of the total, or like how do you think about the growth there uh, in the long run? Is there a kind of like a, a, a base level that you need to do uh, uh, because you know some of the initial or early stage project, uh, early early in the market kind of product releases, you kind of want to handle yourself to see the feedback quicker. Uh, and the rest can, can go with partners. Like, uh, if I think about modeling professional services uh, beyond this year as well, like, how should we think about that? Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Ramo. Yeah, I, I think modeling uh, services going forward, at least for the next year or two, I think, you know, we, we obviously had a significant outperformance in fiscal 23. I think we got to 24 was more of a normal level. And I think that's the way you should think about it going forward. And as we've talked about over time, as more of our business goes to Capella, the services, because there's embedded, obviously, services as part of Capella, 
the professional services component will probably moderate and flatten out over time. It won't continue to grow because that's really the majority of the services we're driving today are on the enterprise business uh, versus Capella. So I think, uh, you know, this this year was a good year to sort of re-level re set and see sort of moderate growth from here on out. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thanks, Ramon. Thanks. And our next question comes from Howard Ma with Guggenheim Securities. Please state your question. Thanks, and I want to add my congratulations uh, on a to a solid finish of the year. So for either uh, Matt or Greg, can you help us think about the mix of total ARR between Capella and Server exiting this year, or, or Enterprise exiting this year, so fiscal 25? What what are the biggest pieces that sh would shift ARR mix to Capella? Is, is it more expansions of existing Capella customers, or is it migrations for on-prem? And how much are on-prem renewals driving the mix shift? Thanks. Yeah, hey, Howard, thanks for that. This is Greg. Um, look, we, as we noted, we finished the year at 11% of our ARR was Capella. And I think I would go back to at the investor day, we said during that medium term four to six year horizon, we would be disappointed if we didn't get to at least a third of Capella mix, if not even a half of the business. So just sort of plotting the course to that time frame because we're not guiding to the Capella mix in fiscal 25. I would say, though, that um, the bigger drivers are uh, first migrations of enterprise customers over, particularly the large, some of the larger scale ones, that will accelerate it. Um, two would be expanding the um, existing Capella customer base, which Matt gave a great example of just recently. And then lastly, look, we've talked about that new logos you're going to see the quantity tick up, but they're going to be at a lower um, starting point as they, you know, enter into the Capella um, journey. So that's probably the third one in terms of rank order, if you will. Okay. I, I appreciate you uh, rank ordering that, Greg. And just a, a follow-up for you, what is – you mentioned the the, uh, the longer average contract duration. What is driving that? Is it is it, is it renewals or, or new logos? And do you expect that to be a persisting revenue tailwind this year or, or only in the first half? Yeah, so Howard, in, in uh, Q4, we um, did two renewals of our largest enterprise customers. One we talked about within the quarter, one was um, actually um, in Q1, they renewed early. And so those two went in and they were both multi-year deals. So we saw a higher than average um, duration this quarter because of those two deals in particular. Um, but again, I think it's going to get back to where we normally see the duration um, I think that was anomalous for those two specific deals. And you obviously see, show it, sh see it show up in RPO. And if you go back a couple of years, you saw a large RPO. And then over time, those largest of customers, they burn off their revenue until they get to this renewal point, And then we put them back in, you know, into the RPO. And then the same thing's going to happen. So it's a, it's a, um, it was a Q4 dynamic, I would say, from a duration perspective. Okay. Very helpful. Thanks. Thank you. Our next question comes from Stephen Schwartz with Wells Fargo. Please state your question. Oh, hi, this is Stefan on for Andy Malinsky. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, I guess to start off, um, on these large deals, I think you had mentioned there were some, some renewals coming up in, in Q1 as well. Was it was there anything that maybe pulled into to Q4 uh, that maybe had an impact uh, beyond what you were expecting? Yeah, yeah, we talked about this, Greg. We talked about um, last quarter that there was two large deals in particular, like very large deals, and one was due for renewal in the quarter and one was not, and we weren't sure at the time whether that was going to close because it wasn't due in the quarter. They both did close. So as we just talked about, the duration of the RPO, um, you know, picked those up. Um, the one that was in quarter renewal obviously hit ARR and revenue. The one that was uh, again, just a little bit early into Q4, you'll see it in ARR, but it obviously hasn't started revenue because it has a Q1 revenue start date. So those were the only sort of dynamics that, that were at play with those couple large deals. Got it. Okay. And then uh, as a follow-up, uh, you know, as you think about uh, capitalizing on this inflection in demand that you're seeing, um, how do you think about how that plays out in terms of investments in, in sales and marketing and R&D? Look, we certainly want to continue with the momentum, and, and we're excited about it, but we're equally focused on the leverage side of the business on a go-forward basis. And so 
when I think about momentum, leverage comes in multiple forms. The, the pace of innovation from our product team is better than it's ever been. Um, and we haven't talked about up, up to this point on the call, our internal use of, of AI, but that's helping our development teams be that much more productive. The more insights we have on Capella, the more fine tuned we can be with, you know, features that we're working on. Um, and so I expect that we're going to get much more efficient, you know, as, as we execute through this inflection. Same is true on, on the go-to-market side. You know, having an additional level of telemetry and signaling from the product side, getting into complementing our, you know, enterprise motion with more product-led growth, um, you know, better fine-tuning our spend based on, you know, the type of demands per my, per my previous comment. Um, and so a, a big part of how we're thinking about inflection is continuing to go fast and being smart about all things Capella, uh, but then being really excited about, you know, a, a more leveraged future across all aspects of our business. And that's before we benefit from the addition of AI into, into our platform as, as we take things to market. Um, so a lot of our focus is, again, continued execution uh, that, that we're proud of and the momentum we've established. How do we maintain that and, and get into uh, levels of efficiency and leverage that uh, we know are possible? Great. Thank you. Our next question comes from Taz Kuyagi with Wedbush Securities. Please state your question. Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, first of all, uh, for Matt or Greg, on Vector Search, can you explain how you monetize that feature? Is that part of the, the base product? Is it an add-on? Do people pay for that separately on top of the, uh, the core product? Yeah, it'll be, Taz, it'll be part of the platform. It's an extension of, of you know, other features. And so they'll, they'll either license it or, or use Capella credits like they would um, other components of the platform. All right, very helpful. Any, I'm not very early, but any, any sense of, you know, what kind of uplift the customer gets when he starts using that feature of the product? Look, too early for us to give you kind of financial trends and, and patterns. Um, I think it's a big part of the value proposition. And, you know, what, what we think about at Couchbase is what are the application dynamics within, you know, our customer base? And what are they trying to do with their innovation agendas? Um, you'd be hard-pressed to find any enterprise that isn't quickly trying to figure out how to get the most out of this exciting technology of, of AI. Well, when you think about highly adaptive um, applications in an AI-powered world, that's going to really depend on a sophisticated data platform that brings together these features but can also handle, you know, the scale and performance of massive data sets that include private information, public information, structured data, unstructured data, at the cloud, at the edge. And so I think, you know, when we talk about one of the biggest market transitions and opportunities that the world has ever seen, it, it, it's hard to put a number on, on the opportunity. What we're focused on is, you know, meeting the needs of, of our customers that are building these adaptive applications. Uh, and if you were to step back and say, lay out the uh, aspects of a data platform for the future world, you'd be hard-pressed to find one that doesn't have you – know, that, that has a better start than, than what we have, and, and we truly believe that we've been, you know, built for this moment. So that, that's really our focus. We continue to, you know, press hard on, on meeting customer needs. Um, you know, monetization is, is going to be exciting, but, again, um, early days for us to give you specifics. We have just one follow-up for Greg. Greg, uh, very strong customer ads this quarter. Any comment on what that does to the average uh, – the average land sizes for new customers? Are you landing more smaller customers now because of the capella traction or the, the average deal size doesn't really change much? Hey, hey Taz. Yeah, we're, we're certainly, as we've talked about with Capella, we're going to be landing more customers at a smaller land point, and we are seeing that uh, for sure. However, it doesn't mean that, like in this quarter, we talked about a couple of large enterprise deals as well, and you see our ARR per customer continue to grow, although it should moderate over time with these Capella customers coming on, but yes, the land points will be smaller, and we are perfectly fine with that because Matt gave the example before of the customer who starts at ten or twenty thousand, and within a year is at eight hundred thousand. So, zero issue with uh, landing small and growing from there. Very helpful. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Taz. Our next question comes from Rudy Kessinger with DA Davidson. Please state your question. 
Hi, this is Andres Miranda for Rudy. Um, I just have a quick question for you guys. Um, how is the consumption growth trending with couple of customers? Um, if you could talk a little bit about that. And the consumption growth in Q4 so far in Q line was is in line in Q1 uh, with recent quarters or better, worse? Any any extra color that you can give on so far? Yeah. Hey, good afternoon. Yeah, look, consumption continues to be good for Capella. We're very pleased at where we are with, again, not only bringing customers on, but getting them going and using. We talked about where there's a number of our customers that are continuing to not only use at the pace that they bought, but actually use beyond the pace that they bought, meaning consuming faster than um, you know they thought they would. So we still feel very good about those consumption trends. Uh, we talked a little bit about those at Investor Day, and they continued through Q4, and look, as as anything we would do, we look at the most recent trends for the last three to six months as the best predictor of what's going to happen in Q1, and we've leveraged that to uh, model into our Q1 guidance. And just as a reminder, again, what we covered at Investor Day, if you look at the pace of growth of um, customers in Capella versus Enterprise, they grow about two times faster going from zero to 100K and four times faster going from 100K to 500K. So we're seeing that continue. Um, and again, I'll, I'll reference back the example that Matt shared before about a customer starting ten or $20,000 and ending up a year later 800000 So we're, we're, we remain very bullish on Capella and the uh, consumption capabilities. Okay, sounds good. And one last question, if I may. Uh, next month, our POs were up very strongly over Q3. Uh, how much was that driven by strong renewals versus new deals? And should the next 12 months RPOs begin to track more in line with ARR in fiscal year 25? Uh, yeah, so I think you were asking about RPO and ARR. The, the RPO, that was the question. Obviously, again, we talked about those couple of large enterprise deals uh, being large, not only large, but large multi-year deals. So, um, you know, we saw a, a very nice uh you know, increase in our RPO. You'll see that um, continue, obviously, year over year, early in the year, but then obviously these customers will start burning off uh, their revenue and the, the RPO growth will moderate. And if, I'd just say if you look at RPO over the last couple of years, it's a good sort of pattern set of what we probably would expect to happen over the next couple of years. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from Param Singh with Oppenheimer and Company. Please state your question. Yeah, hi, thank you. Uh, yeah, this is Param Singh on for HI Kidron, and thank you for taking my question. Um, I know the the revenue guide has been beaten to death, but I just want to understand the impact uh, from a higher mix of Capella. And as you look to fiscal 25, what are you embedding in your guide as an incremental headwind? Yeah. Hey, thanks, Param. It's Greg. Um, so a couple things. Um, look, we, as you saw with our Q1 guide, we feel good about how Q1 is going to uh, shape up from a revenue perspective in particular. Again, I'll go back to that large customer that we signed in Q4 with a start date in Q1, which will give us an outsized um, you know, upfront license revenue from ASC 606, which is a bit anomalous. So if you think about revenue for the year, um, Q1 will be, you know, stronger than normal, and then it'll be sort of flattish for the next couple quarters, um, just given the strength of that upfront license revenue. Um, uh, we don't, we don't necessarily see. I know you referred to a headwind uh, potentially with Capella revenue. We don't see that being a headwind. We see that being, if anything, a tailwind as we continue to move forward. So, again, continued good strength with our enterprise customers and and growth with, with Capella should help us um, again get to that medium-term outlook of being a 20% plus top-line grower. Got it. Got it. Yeah, I was thinking more in terms of revenue recognition, but but I hear your point. So, um, you know, if I think about Capella, um, you know, and Columnar, the opportunity to provide an analytical database, what have you heard so far? What's the opportunity set and incremental workloads you can address with that? Yeah, great. I'm glad you brought that up. It, it was a really important release for the year. Um, and as we think about, again, our, our worldview that applications need to be highly personalized, highly interactive, available from the cloud to the edge, we think a fundamental attribute is being able to inject real-time analytics while the application is being, you know, used by users. Um, and so it's really about 
complementing the operational data store with real-time analytics. What's important about our approach to Columnar also is injecting multiple data sets, whether that's from, you know, S3 or, you know, other competitive database solutions into the Couchbase uh, engine so that that application is, is, is that much more sophisticated. So I think about, you know, the amount of data that's in the platform that the application can draw its sophistication from, that, that's really the power of, of, of that combination. You then extend Vector, which brings in AI intelligence to layer on top of that. Um, you know, this is the power of the, of the Couchbase platform in action. Any, any comment or early feedback from customers here? Yeah, look, I mean, we're, we're in preview. I'd, I'd say it's exceeded our expectations. Um, you know, specific commentary on, um, you know, the ease of, of rolling that out. The, um, you know, you start to get in the complexity of things like ETL and moving, you know, data from, you know, one system to another. We can remove that complexity um, and converge all that capability in, into the Couchbase platform. Keep in mind, we're doing this with SQL++ and natural language. All of this is embedded in uh, Capella IQ. Um, so the, the, the capabilities that our developers have at their fingertips that they didn't have, you know, even six months ago, I think is being acknowledged in, uh, in these previews, and we expect that to continue as we, as we move to GA. All right. All right. Thanks again for taking my questions, and great quarter, guys. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Are there are no further questions at this time. I'll turn the floor back to Matt Cain for closing comments. Thanks, operator, and thanks to everyone for joining us today. We're thrilled with our performance and believe fiscal 2025 will be another historic year for Couchbase. We look forward to speaking with you all again soon. Thank you. Thank you. This concludes today's conference. All parties may disconnect. Have a good day.